So it seems apparent that us at some point in the next few months are going to be, well, in self-isolation at home, twiddling our thumbs, so to speak. And for all the bad things that are happening right now, there is a silver lining, and that is, yeah, there's a, it's a good opportunity to learn some new, new things. So I thought I should put together this video, which is basically my top 10 suggestions of what to do in self-isolation. Obviously, I'm a bit biased towards electronics and stuff like that, so I'm hoping maybe if you're into that stuff, this might be a little bit of insight and just give you some ideas. Most of this video is also relying on the fact that the logistics and delivery systems that are in place in countries, well, are, st are still intact. Number one, Atari Punk console. So I get a lot of emails from people asking, where, where should I start? What, what should I do to begin this whole, you know, making electronic things and stuff like that? And I always say the same thing, start simple. And the Atari Punk console is one of the simplest yet funnest circuits uh, around. You can make it DIY using strip board and just one chip and a few resistors and capacitors or you can purchase a kit and these kits are literally available for in between 10 to 15 pounds and they're very simple to build. A very good example of these kits is rack kits. Uh, the link is in the description as will all of the things that I mention in this video. They'll just just check below. There'll be a good like thing of what what I'm talking about. So if you want to get into this stuff now, it's probably a good time because it's cheap and simple and if you get yourself a five pound soldering iron, a pair of scissors and a bit of solder, uh, you can pretty much build the Atari Punk console and many other projects for instance. Number two, the Baby 8 or Baby 10 Step Sequencer. This is another circuit that is very fun and really nice to build. It was probably the second circuit I ever built after the Atari Punk console. And it connects to the Atari Punk console. Basically, the Baby 8 or Baby 10 Step Sequencer. It's quite an old and simple design. It's based around a 4017 binary counter. Basically, this counts through from 0 to 9, from 1 to 10. And every single leg from 0 to 10, you wire a particular potentiometer to it which means that you can control different voltages send them out and control the pitch or whatever you want on your Atari punk console amazingly enough the aforementioned rackets also has this in kit form as well but there are many resources on the internet if you want to build the Atari punk console and the baby 8 step sequencer all in one and um, you know on strip board or something like that number three slightly more tech synthesizers I mean you could jump in the deep end go and check out a website like thonk for for instance, Thonk basically sells uh, very good Eurorack DIY synthesizer kits uh, ranging from Bifaco all the way to Gimco Synthes. They stock a lot of very good companies and they have a lot of other suppliers as well. So if you're interested in building synthesizers, go and check that out. And not to mention, this is not plugging, but maybe it's the time to build a Cosmo synthesizer. That's right, I've been releasing my own modules so you can build your very own Cosmo synthesizer. Uh, the links are also in the description. You're gonna get bored of me saying that, but I'm gonna keep on saying it. Number four, get into 3D printing. 3D printing has come a heck of a long way in the last 10 years. I actually built a rep wrap DIY 3D printer way back in 2011. It did print reasonably, however, everything printed diagonally. I couldn't work out what mistake I made, but it was rather difficult. Thankfully, they've all come along a long way since then. And you can actually purchase really cheap ones. However, successful prints on those machines are somewhat rare. Trust me, you'll be pleased that you spent a little bit more money and got something that was a bit more reliable and not every time it printed, it came out as a mushy, mushy old mess. Maybe I'm a bit biased because the Lowell's Bot Mini is the only 3D printer I have had extensive experience with, but I can safely say I don't really have any complaints for this as far as modern 3D printers go. I mean, this thing is built like a tank. I've even printed with it in the back of vans whilst they were driving. And yeah, it prints successfully 99% of the time, nearly every time. Also, not to mention within the next month or so, there will probably be an open source ventilator that will be available for building. And usually a 3D printer will be quite useful in a community, for instance. If we require more parts for ventilators, maybe it might be useful for you to have said 3D printer. Number six. Bare Conductive Touch Thingamajiggies. That's right, there's a really cool uh, UK company called Bear Conductive. I've actually used their things quite a few times. I built a Kellogg's Crispy Effects 
pedal using their conductive paint. I also made a musical Christmas tree using their touch circuit board. However, they've brought out some newer versions of their products and they're basically in this box right here and we're gonna we're gonna have a quick peek so they actually sent me these things which is pretty awesome and I will probably be covering these in a future video because they have electric paint where you basically paint the project on on a piece of paper you got some electric paste which is the same thing there is a connector for a Raspberry Pi to be connected it's sort of like an interface board so you can connect your Raspberry Pi to the physical world using these things but this is the bit that I'm interested in right now there's one thing that I really want to try because I have a theory about this whole this whole panic buying and this may have the answer. So if you are not aware, the touch board by Bear Conductive, basically you can plug this up to pretty much anything and turn anything into a musical instrument. And like I said, I turned a Christmas tree into a musical instrument and a train with this last time. Congra 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 congratulations. If you're hearing this message, your touch board is live. So I've got a theory of why people were panic buying toilet rolls, basically. It's basically, I think they've been panic buying toilet rolls because they need to make toilet roll synthesizers. So basically I've got all of the tissue paper literally hooked up. All I did was just put them on with crocodile cables onto the touch board. You could do loads of other finite things. There's capacitive touch. And there's also kind of proximity controls, but I'm not touching that. This is all just making the toilet roll a little bit musical. Of course, that's why everybody's been hoarding the toilet paper. <laughs> Number seven, breadboards. Basically, it's how you prototype circuits and you could buy very good starter kits online. There are links below for these kind of things, but basically you can make circuits that aren't permanent. You don't have to worry about soldering. You don't have to worry about all that jizz jazz and you could just get making these circuits. There is a very, very good YouTube channel that I would recommend regarding breadboard project and that is Ben Eater. If you don't know of Ben Eater, he's got some very amazing projects, even a massive project that is to make your own 8-bit computer on breadboard. I would definitely recommend you sitting down and watching that stuff. You will learn a heck of a lot. Number eight, teensies or Arduinos. This is a sort of continuation upon the breadboard idea because Arduinos or any other development boards really usually plug into breadboards very nicely. And there is a heck of a lot of resources on these things and it's a nice mashup between computers and coding and the physical world being able to make projects with your fingers using electronics. There is a plethora of beginner kits that you can purchase which also include reading material to get you started and trust me if you haven't even started thinking about coding you will still be able to do it and you'll learn a lot and you never know you might get out of this whole quarantine situation with um, new career prospects in the coding world. Number nine, VCV. So yeah maybe you don't want want to get your hands dirty with all of these physical things and stuff like that and you like sitting in your bed on your laptop well I've got something just for you it's called VCV it's a virtual modular synthesizer and if you're not aware of it what you do is you download the free beginner setup and it comes with a load of starter modules and what you do is you buy other modules and put it all together on your computer and it's all simulated and stuff and your hands you've got to pretend are actually patching it but it's basically like a real modular synth but in a computer I don't believe I was ever gonna say those words ever and finally new old stock RC car kits yeah this is a bit of an odd one and it's nothing to do with music however I did a video a month ago about controlling a remote control car with a keyboard uh, you know trying to play music in it to try and steer the car left and right and I found it as a perfect excuse for me to actually buy a new old stock Tamiya Grasshopper RC car kit which is surprisingly still available and you can actually purchase an all-in-one everything to get you started kind of package that includes the controller and the new old stock RC car kit all together. I put the kit together in my off time as a kind of unwinding kind of exercise and it was sort of like reliving like being 10 again trying to build these kits. I never had one of these kits before but they're actually really really fun to build. They're not that challenging uh, it's very paint by numbers but they, you still get that satisfaction that you've actually made something with your own hands and you get a remote control car at the end of it. Plus the fact is it's not like this new stuff that's all a bit like crap. It's actually like bulky and built like, you know, with uh, bread and butter, but nuts and bolts. 
So yeah, that was a little bit of insight of ideas of what you could possibly do in these times. The most important thing is staying positive. I'll also be doing this month's Patreon live stream tonight and there may be a couple more this month because, you know, we're all stuck indoors a bit. Sadly, a lot of my upcoming gigs have been postponed. So I decided on Friday, I'm actually going to do an online gig. So keep an eye out. They're still, still trying to figure out the details, but yeah. Friday evening UK time there'll be an online show and yeah until next time I've been Luke Mum No Computer don't forget to subscribe stay safe and don't be scared to try it I've still got that paint on my hands I wonder if my hands are super conductive now anyway